Greek spirits and make yourselves comfortable as we transport you to an Athenian forest filled with magic and mischief. Your mobile phones will not work here, so do not try them. Recording is not permitted in my forest either. And though the fairy kingdom walks here tonight, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which this theatre was built. Enjoy the show, or else. <laughs> A nuptial hour draws on a pace. Four happy days bring in another moon, but Omi thinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires, like to a stepdame or a dowager, long will bring out a young man's revenue. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time, and then the moon, like to a silver bow new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Go for the straight. Stir up the Athenian mute to merriment. Awake the pert and nimble spirit of the word. Turn melancholy forth the funerals, the pale companion is not for our pomp. Apollosa, I woo thee with my sword, and one thy love doing the injuries, but I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with revelling. <clears throat> my noble lord, a matter of business. A letter from Aegeus. Ah, good Aegeus. What's news with him? He writes, my noble lord, most noble Theseus. For vexation am I with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Demetrius, my noble lord, hath my consent to marry her. And my gracious duke, this man Lysander, hath bewitched the bosom of my child. He hath given her rhymes, he hath interchanged love tokens with my daughter. He hath by moonlight sung with feigning voices of feigning love, and stolen the impression of her fantasy, and thus turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And thy gracious duke, be it so she, will not hear before your grace consent to marry Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall either be to Demetrius or to her death. According to our law immediately provided in this case, Aegeus of Athens. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maids, to your father should be as a god, one that composed your beauties, ye and one you are but a form in wax. 
by him imprinted within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. He in himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked, but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must look with his judgment. <clears throat> I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, know of your youth, examine well your blood. Be not yield to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. For I am shady close to you to live a barren sister all your life. Thrice blessed they that masters so their blood to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthly happy as a rose distilled than that which withering on a virgin thorn grows, lives, and dies in a single blessedness. So I will grow, so live, so die, my lord, or I will my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next moon, the sealing day, betwixt my love and me for everlasting bond of fellowship, upon that day be prepared to die for disobedience to your father's will. Or else wed Demetrius, as he would, or on Diana's altar for I, austerity, and single life. Good land, sweet Hermia. And thy standard yield thy grace title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? <laughs> Scornful Lysander, she is mine by right. I am my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than you. My fortunes every way is fairly rent, huh. if not with vantages Demetrius's. And which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should I not then prosecute my right? Demetrius, all about you to his head, made love to Nadar's daughter Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess, I have heard so much and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof. But come, Demetrius, I have some private schooling for you. For you, fair Hermia, look, you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, by which to no means we may extenuate, to death or to vow for single life. Come, Apollosa. What cheer, my love? Demetrius, come along. I must confer with you in some business against our nuptial. Confer with you of something that almost concerns yourself. Oh. Oh. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which could fall between the tempest of my eyes. Uh, I mean, for out that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. But either it was different in blood. Oh, cross! Too high to be enthralled to low. Or else it was Miss Graft in respect of years. Oh, spite! Too old to be engaged to young! Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell! To choose love by another's eyes. Or, if there were sympathy in choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream, bright as the lightning in the cold at night, that in a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth. And here a man hath the power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, bright things come to confusion. If, then, truer lovers have ever been crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, as it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs and wishes and tears. Poor fancy's followers. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager, a great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house, and rode seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee, and to that sharp place the Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou love me then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena, to do observance till morn and May. There, I will stay thee. <laughs> my good life, Sander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, and by the simplicity of 
Venus is dubbed, by that which knitted souls and prospers loves, and by that fire which burned the Carthage Queen when the false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that men have ever broke, in number more than women ever spoke, in that place thou hast appointed me. Tomorrow I will meet with thee. Do you promise, love? <laughs> Look, here comes Helena. God's be for Helena. With her away. Call you me fair. Fair again, I say. Demetrius loves you fair. Oh, happy fair. Your eyes are too blown stars. Your voice more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear. When we just green, when hawthorn buds appear. The sickness is catching. Where favour so yours, but I catch fair Hermia, ere I go. My eye would catch your eye, my voice your voice, my tongue would catch your tongue, sweet melody. Were the world mine, Demetrius being faded, the rest I give to thee, you translated. Now teach me how you look and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Well, your frowns could teach my smiles such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Now that my prayers could such affection move. Oh, the more I hate, the more he follows me. I love him the more he hates me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. Oh, no. But your beauty with that fault be mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Uh, what graces in my love do dwell that he hath turned to heaven under hell? Helen. To you our minds will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking the liquid pearl, the bladed grass, a lover's time doth still conceal, her Athens gates have we devices steel. And in that place where you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet. And thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and strange companies. Oh, farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee by Demetrius. Lysander, keep word. We must starve our sight from mother's food tomorrow, deep midnight. I will, my home now. How long? Adieu. It's you and him, and Demetrius stoked on you. And happy summer or the sun can be. Throughout Athens, I thought as fair as she. But what of that? For well, Demetrius thinks not so, when he will know all that he do know. And as he errs, so I admire with his qualities. <laughs> Things base and vile, folding no quantity. Love can transpose form to dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. And therefore is named Cupid said to be painted blind. Nor hath love of any judgment taste, wings and no eyes figure on heady haste. Well, therefore, love is said to be like a child, for in choice he is so oft beguiled, as waggish boys and games themselves to swear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. Well, for before Demetrius doted on Hermia's eye, he hailed out oaths that he was only mine. And then, when some heat from Hermia was felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I could go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. And then, to the wood, will he tomorrow night pursue her? And for this intelligence, if he gives me thanks, but, well, it is of a dear expense, but, Mean I here to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Generally man by man according to the script. Here is the scroll of every man's name which, 
brought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quinn, say what the play treats on. Then read the names of the actors, they're so great to will point. Very our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merry. Now call forth your actors by this world. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, <laughs> are set down for Pyramus. Yeah, what is Pyramus? <laughs> lover or a tyrant? A lover. That kills him so he must gather for love. <laughs> that will take some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, <laughs> let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms, I will condole in some measure. To the rest. Francis Blake. Yeah, my chief humour is retirement. I could play Berkeley's rarely, or a part to tear a cat in to make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates. And Pippa's car <laughs> shall shine from far <laughs> and make a mark the foolish fate. Francis Flute, the bell is met. in Berkeley's vein, a <laughs> Francis Flute, the bell is mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. Oh, what is Thisbe? A wandering knight. It is the lady that Pyramus must love. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, faith, let me not play a woman. I've got a beer coming. That's all one. <laughs> You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. Oh, and I'm going to hide my face. Let me play this for two. <laughs> I will speak in a monstrous little voice. <laughs> this bear. This nair. Oh, Pyrrhus. Lover, dear. My lady, dear. And this be dear. No, no. You must play Pyramus. And flute. You, this be. Robin Starveling, the tailor. Yeah, here, Quince. Robin Starveling, you must play Fisby's mother. Tom Snap, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus's father. Myself, Fisby's father. Uh, Snug, the joiner. <laughs> you, the lines part. And I hope here is a play fitted. Has the lion's part been written? Um, pray, if it be, um, give it to me, for I am slow of study. <laughs> <laughs> you may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. <laughs> Let me be quiet. <laughs> I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that the Duke will say, let him roar again. Let him roar again! <laughs> <laughs> and you should do too terribly. You would fright the Duchess and the ladies that they would shriek. And that were enough to hang us all. That, that would hang us every mother's son. son. Masters, I grant you that if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice and I will roar you as gently as any sucking dog. I will roar you as for a nightingale. <laughs> you can play no part but Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet faced man. <laughs> a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day. A most gentleman like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. <laughs> <laughs> what you grow is to play in it. What? What you will? I will discharge it in either your straw-coloured beard or your purple ingrained beard, French tawny beard. Your perfect crown colour beard, your perfect beard. Some of your French crowns have no hair at all. And then you will play barefaced. But masters, here are your parts. And I am to entreat you, request you and desire you, to con them by tomorrow night, 
and meet me in the palace wood, a mile without the town, by moonlight. There we will rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company, and our device is known. I shall draw a bill of properties such as I play once. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we will rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. <laughs> Adieu. At the Duke's Oak we meet. Enough. Hold or cut bow strings. Amazon. 
your buskined mistress and your warrior love to Theseus must be wedded. And you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. <laughs> How canst thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Perigenia, whom he ravished? and make him with fair eagles break his faith with Ariadne and Antiochus. These are the forgeries of jealousy. <laughs> and never since the middle summer spring met we on hill, in dale, forest or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, when the beached margin of the sea to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls, Thou hast disturbed us, for now the winds pipe into us in vain, as in revenge have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs that falling in the land have every pelting river made so proud they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the ploughman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field. The crows are fatted with the murray and flock, and the nine men's morris is filled with mud. The great mazes in their wanton green are, for their lack of tread, undistinguishable. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is now him or carol blessed. Therefore the moon, governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound, and thorough this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. <sighs> Hoary headed frosts far in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and on old hinds thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as in mockery set. The spring, summer, childing autumn, angry winter, hath changed their wanted liveries, and the mazed world, by their increase, now knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votaress of my order, and full often had she gossiped by my side, and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, when we had laughed to see the sails grow big, bellied with the wanton wind, marking the embarked traders on the flood, which she, with pretty and swimming gait following, her womb then rich with my young squire, would follow sailing upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again as from a voyage rich with merchandise. But she, being mortal, of that boy did die. And it's for her sake that I drew him up, and it is for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance, till Theseus' wedding day. If you would dance with us patiently in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your horns. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away! I shall chide down right if I long to stay. <laughs> Go thy way, thou shalt not from this grope like torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither. Thou rememberest, since once I sat upon a promontory, and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back utter such dulcet, harmonious breath, that the rude seas grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. 
That very time I saw, but thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed. A certain aim he took at a vestal throned by the west, and loosed his arrow smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon, and the imperial votaress passed on in maiden meditation and fancy free. Yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound, and maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me this flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids lay will make man or woman madly dote upon the next like creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I will put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. <coughs> Having once this juice, I'll wash Titania when she is asleep, and drop the liquor of it on her eyes. The next thing she then wakens upon will be a lion or bear or wolf or bull or a meddling monkey or a busy ape. She shall pursue it with the soul of love. And here I take this chance off her sight, as I can with another herb. I'll make her render up her page to me. Well, who comes here? I am visible. I will overhear that conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is thy Sander and fair Hermia? The one I will slay, and the other slayeth me. <laughs> and thou toldest me thou wast stolen unto this wood. And here I am, and woe within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence get thee gone, and follow me no more. When you draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave me to your power to draw, and I will have no power but to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you that I do not, nor that I cannot, love you? For that do I love you the more. Demetrius! I am your spaniel, and the more you beat me, the more I will fawn on you. Use me, but as your spaniel, spare me, strike me, deflect me, lose me, but give me leave, as I'm worthy as I am to follow you. What worse a place can I beg of your respect than to be used as your dog? <laughs> Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit. For I am sick when I do look on you. Sick when I look not on you. Oh, you do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not, and to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth your virginity. Oh, your virtue is my privilege, and then for that I think I am not in the night. Nor doth this wood lack the world of company, for you in my respect are all the world. Then how could it be said that I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I'll run from thee, and hide me in the brakes, and lead thee to the mercy of wild beasts! Oh, the wildest have such a heart as you. Run as you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies, and Daphne holds the chase, but cowardice pursues, and thou flies. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. For if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. Oh, fie! In wood, in field, and in town you do me mischief, Demetrius. Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. I cannot woo as men may do. I was made to be wooed, not born to woo. No! <laughs> <sighs> follow me, and make a heaven unto hell to die upon that hand I love so well. <sighs> Be well, nymph. If he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, here it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows, by over canopy with luscious wood vine, with sweet musk roses and with eglin thyme. There, sleep to Tanya, some time of the night. Lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with this juice I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <sighs> Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. An Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it such that the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Affect it with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. 
and look down, meet me here, the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. <clears throat> <laughs> And then for the third part of Minute Heads. Some to kill cankers in the muskrose buds. Some to war with rare mice through their leaden wings to make my small elves coats. And some keep back the clamorous owl that nightly hoots at our quaint spirits. Sing me asleep. Then off to your offices and let me go. So that but one heart, we can make it two bosoms interchange with an oath. So then two bosoms and a single trough. And by your side, no bedroom me deny. For lying so, I do not lie. Oh, Lysander riddles very prettily. <laughs> now much beshrew my manners and my pride, if Hermia meant to say, Lysander, lie. But, gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further off. In human modesty, such separation as well may be said, becomes of a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distant. And good night, sweet friend. They love now also to their sweet life end. Amen. Amen to that fair prayer. Say I, and then in life when I am blue. <laughs> Here is my bed. Sleep you be all his rest. With half that wish, the wish's eyes be pressed. Through the forest have I gone, but Athenian found I none on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force in stirring love. Night and silence, who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth hear. <gasps> this is he, my master said, despises the Athenian maid. And the maiden, sleeping sound, on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, she dares not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. Churl, upon thy eyes I'll throw all the power this child doth owe. 
When thou wakest, let love forfeit. Sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So awake when I am gone, for I am as now to Oberon. I charge thee, Hanson, do not hold me thus. Oh, thou darkling, leave me, do not so. Sweet Helena, stay on thy peril, yes? I alone will go. Ah! <laughs> oh, I am out of breath in this bond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy in Hermia, wheresoever she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Well, not with salt tears, if so, mine are often more awash than hers. No, no, I am as ugly as a bear. Beasts who meet me often run away for fear. Therefore, no marvel flies a monster, monster does, Demetrius. What wicked and disassembling glass of mine make me compare with Hermia's fiery eyes? Who is here, Lysander? On the ground, dead or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, <laughs> if you live, good sir, awake. And, and run through fire. I will for thy sweet sake. Transparent, Helen. Nature shows us. That through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my soul. <laughs> say not so, I said. Say not so. What? You love to Hermia, then what though? Hermia still loves you, then be content. <laughs> Content with Hermia? <laughs> I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change a raven for a dove? The will of a man is by his reason swayed. And reason says you are the worthier maid. Things grow not right until they cease. So I, being young, till now write not to reason. And touching now the point of human skill, reason becomes the marshal to my will and leads me to your eyes. I really love love's stories, written in love's richest book. <laughs> Where was I to this king mockery born? When at your hand did I deserve this scorn? Is it not enough, is it not enough, young man? <laughs> that I have never known you, I can never deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye, but you must flat my insufficiency. Or you do me wrong, good sooth you do, in such a disdainful manner, me to woo. But pay you well, I must confess, I thought you lord of a more true gentleness. What, a lady of my, one man of use should of another be with you? She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there. And never mayst thou come by sand and near. For a surfeit of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the stomach brings. Whereas Thy heresies the most men do lead, I hated most of those they did deceive. So thou, my surfeit and my heresy, of all behaved, but the most of me, and to all my powers address your love and might, to honour Helen, and to be her knight. Marvelous can 
convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. This Hawthorne break our entire house. And we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Hey, it's. Say it's now, Bully Bottom. There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never play. <laughs> First, Pyramus must draw the sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. Why, you like him? Paul is there! I believe we must leave for killing out when all is done. What a wit! I have advice to make all well. Write me a plural, and let the prologue seem to say, we will do no harm with our swords, and, for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. And this will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue, and it shall be written in H and C. No, I'll make it two more, let it be paper, paper. Well, not the ladies, you fear of the wine. I fear it, I promise to you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves. To bring in God's shield us, a lion among ladies is the most dreadful thing. But there is not a more fearful wildfowl than your lion living. We ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell he is not a lion. No. He must name his name. Half his face must be seen through the lion's neck, and he must himself speak, saying thus sort of the same defect. Ladies, or fair ladies, <laughs> I wish you, I request, I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life be yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, in for pity on my life, no, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. And then let him name his name and tell them plainly he has stuck the <laughs> Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is to bring the moonlight into a chamber, for you know, Pyramus and Thisbe meets by moonlight. Stop the moon shine the night we play our play. A calendar. <laughs> a calendar. Look in the almanac. Yes, it does shine that much. Why then? You may leave a casement at the great chamber window where we play with them. The moon may shine in at the casement. Aye, or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lanthorn and say he comes to this figure or to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber for Pyramus and Thisbe says the story is just talk through the truth of a wall. <laughs> Nina's 
that you answered to Pyramus. You speak all your part at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter. You cue his part. It is never tired. Oh, um. That's true, that's true, that's toss, but yet would never tire. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever fear this be, I will only die. <laughs> I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me. <laughs> Frighten me if they could. Well, I will not move from this space. I will walk up and down, and I will sing so that they shall hear that I'm not. do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a fairy of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. So go with me. I will give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they will fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing. While thou impressed flowers dost sleep. 
and I will purge thy mortal grossness, <laughs> so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peace blossom, copper, dewdrop, moth and mustard seed. Ready. And die. And die. And die. And die. And die. Where, Where shall, shall we go? go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with green grapes, purple figs and mulberries. The honey bags steal from the humblebees, and the night tapers crop their waxen thighs, and light them in the fiery glowworm's eyes to have my love to bed and to arise. Painted wings plucked from the butterflies to fan moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod to him else, and do him curtsies. Hail, mortal, hail, 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 hail. I cry your worship's mercy heartily. I beseech your worship's name. <coughs> Good master cobweb, if I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you to desire you a more acquaintance, good master cobweb. <laughs> you will make bold. Peace, Watson. Commend me to your mother, Mistress Squash, and your father, Master Peace. God, good master Peace Blossom, I shall desire you a more acquaintance. Mustard seed, I know your patience well. That same cowardly giant like Oxbeef hath devoured many a gentleman of your house. I promise you, your eyes have made, your, many of your kindred have made my eyes water ere now. I shall desire you with more acquaintance too. Good master, mustard seed. Come, wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower lamenting some enforced chastity. Tie up my love's tongue. Bring him silently. Back at our fairy court in 20 minutes. Don't be late. <laughs> <laughs> 